Should I expect my husband to love me? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, we're taking a subject suggestion from our Discord, and we're going to be discussing expectations. Should I have the expectation that my husband will love me? As you guys know, I am getting married, and I do have the expectation that he does and will continue to love me through the lifetime of our marriage. Now, we are monogamous, and we're hoping for a long-term commitment. We don't believe in divorce unless there is abuse. And since neither of us plan to abuse each other, I think we will reach the success of a long-term marriage. Now, this comment from Discord made me think of the expectations we have with our family members, our friends, our lovers, our partners, our coworkers, just life in general. And then I started to, you know, go down that rabbit hole of expectations and assumptions. Now, before I jump fully into it, let's refer to the comment just so we know what the original commenter hoped we would talk about today. So the original comment goes as follows. What does it mean to have an expectation of someone? What is the purpose of expectations? And is there a value to them? In most bubbles, expectations seem to be a default. I've seen some bubbles tell you to not have expectations so you can avoid disappointment, resentment, and other hard feelings. Other bubbles will tell you that expectations can be rigid and may put a strain on relationships, platonic, romantic, familiar, familial. The one we have even with ourselves, if they are too unrealistic. Additionally, we can become attached to our expectations, causing many of us who are still growing to have unhealthy relationships with them. Lastly, I suppose some people could see an expectation as a form of attempted control. This all in mind, when does it make sense to have an expectation? When do we know if we're being unreal, or sorry, when do we know if we're being realistic with our expectations? Should we even have them to begin with? Are expectations a form of control? Is it fair to have them? Should we really be avoiding expectations just because having them not met makes us feel bad and sometimes that is hard to cope with? When should it be clear to us that we shouldn't have a particular expectation, whether it be of ourselves or others? Do expectations make relationships, whether with ourselves or others, really that much harder? Or is there a way to have both the bread and the butter? The relationship and the expectation. So I wrote down some notes for myself of what I think about when I think of an expectation. I think expectations coincide with boundaries, which are personal, and they coincide with rules, rules of the relationship, rules of the relationship between you and your partner, family members, and so on. So there are three ways I thought about this expectation, right? Is it within reason to have an expectation? I won't have an expectation because I don't want to be let down. That seems like a cope to me, right? We don't want to cope through life. And and I know under and I understand, right? As somebody who came from a really bad place with mental health to a much healthier and better place, sometimes coping is the way we manage. So I'm not, you know, totally crapping on coping, but I think we eventually want the healthier version of our life, right? We want to be healthy. We want to be happy and we want to be kind to ourselves and others. So for me, coping is just a temporary band-aid. The second thing is I don't want to have an expectation of anyone outside of what's within reason. I think that's sort of hope. So that's the healthier relationship you have with expectation. I hope something of someone, I hope they reach this expectation, but at the end of the day, I'm going to side with reality and just sort of radically accept them for where they're at, including myself. In the past, I definitely have had the f- or gotten the feedback from people where they've said that they felt like my expectations of them were a little bit too high. And how could I expect something of them that I either couldn't do myself or maybe even if I could do them myself, is it fair to expect them to do it? And I think in some ways, of course, it's never healthy to have the same expectations for myself that I have for others. And at the end of the day, there are things that will overlap, right? So I have the expectation that my partner won't cheat on me and I also have the expectation of myself that I will not cheat on him. This is very important, especially given the way the world currently talks about cheating as if it's this normal expectation in a relationship. I think I'm gonna put down my foot even more to make it a rule of the relationship that we do not cheat. My partner and I have made it such a strong rule that if either of us cheat, it's considered abuse and therefore grounds for divorce. This is a standard of relationship that him and I have decided to uphold, but it wouldn't be fair to expect that standard of expectation onto other couples. Do I think this is the healthier way to do relationships? Yes. But I, again, for us, we're looking to be healthy. For us, that means healthy. It makes us happy and it's us being kind to one another. Why would I want to abuse my partner by cheating on him? And why would he want to abuse me by cheating on me? So of course we have the expectation of no cheating. Expectations have 
two relationships, right? They have the relationship of assuming and the relationship of knowing. I know to expect this of my partner because the expectations I have of them align with who they are as a character, their sense of self. And then there's the assuming, right? So I wrote down a list of things we assume and we have expectations of. All parents love their children. All teachers care for their students. All all wives love their husbands. All children feel connected to their parents. All doctors want to help care for their patients. Um, oh my God, here I am trying to read my own handwriting. <laughs> I couldn't read my, hand, my own handwriting. All governments want the best for their people. We make these assumptions because it's reflective of our best hope for humanity. I think it's good to have expectations that are rooted in hope. And I think on the other side of that, because we don't want to be naive, we also want to have a realistic relationship with those expectations. So if we go back and revisit that list, all parents love their children. We know that's just not true. As sad as it is, as heartbreaking as it is, that's just not true, right? All teachers care for their students. Once again, it's a great idea. All st all teachers really care for their students, but we know that's not true. All wives love their husbands. We know that's not true. All children feel connected to their parents. Not true. Plenty of children don't feel connected to the people that gave birth to them or that passed on their DNA. They don't feel connected to the people that are their f flesh and blood, right? Um, uh, let's see. All doctors want to care for patients. Not all doctors are here expressing total care for their patients. I recently, uh, the last couple years, came across Blake Lively's foundation to help children who are exploited. And she said one of the scariest things is how many people go into pediatric medicine in order to be uh, closer to children in order to pr be a predator to children. It's so bad that some of the doctors they have caught through their foundation have been caught while the mother was giving birth molesting children with the umbilical cord still attached so we know not all doctors care about their patients right and then of course all doc all governments sorry all governments want the best for their people obviously not true i think not i think throughout history you know that not all governments care for their people in the same way that the people want them to care for them i think that we need to remember that governments are people and everybody is just people right? Like humans are going to human, but we are human. And so we're going to human. And so we're going to fall into a cognitive dissonance in relation to expectation and reality. We could be at fault for that. So I really like that this commenter asked the question of, you know, when do you know you're asking too much? When do you know your expectations are wrong? So you really have a couple of options in relation to expectations, in my opinion, right? You can cope, the whole time and get into a relationship and just assume one day they might betray my trust. One day me having expectations is so outrageous I will have none because one day they're definitely going to cheat on me, definitely going to waste my money, definitely going to take my kids away from me. I don't have any expectations of women because they're all failures. I have no expectations of men because they're all losers. I have no expectation of my government because it will always betray me. I have no expectation of myself so I never have to hold anyone to a higher standard, including and especially myself. I think the moment you give up on humanity, you've given up on yourself. The moment you've decided to throw in the towel of hoping the best for humanity or the expectation that humanity should do better, you've really given up on yourself. That is my personal opinion. I really think that I see it reflected in myself and others. The moment you meet someone who's super cynical, super pessimistic, oh, people are just the worst. People are so ugly. Isn't that just a reflection of how you see yourself? And when you don't have the expectation that humanity will do better, why would you do better? Why would you do better? And what is humanity when if you're not a part of it, right? Humanity is a reflection of us as a collective. Individuals, which this channel primarily focuses on, right? We get to live within the sort of like invisible pathways within all of culture and society, but at the same time, we're still a part of it. I'm still a voter. I'm still a woman. I'm still a participant. I'm still a taxpayer. I'm still, you know, someone's neighbor. So no matter what, I can't escape being a community member. And I also can't deny the fact that I am an individual. And so I have to have individual expectations of myself and of course, expectations of my community and then expectations of myself within the community. So there are expectations. Now, I hold myself to, uh, I think, a pretty high standard. But of course, everyone thinks they hold themselves to a high standard, I think. <laughs> or maybe they don't because they're giving up. So of course, there's the prepare. This is the other option, right? You prepare and take the chance for failure. You prepare and you try to assume less and you try to accept more. So one of the ways you could sort of do this, one of the ways that I do this, 
is let's say, and this is, okay, this is, to be honest with you, expectation has been the hardest relationship I've had with myself in terms of finding my joy and making peace with the people in my life because the people in my life are diverse. They come from completely different backgrounds and even the family members that I grew up with, my nine siblings, my two parents, my wonderful family, they are all so different in their own way. One of the things that I actually realized through meditation and reflection was how differently my parents treated all of their children. Now, at face value, that might sound horrible, but I think in a way, because my parents really saw us as real people, they did treat us differently. Now, this was good and bad in many ways. So like as an example, one of my siblings was really good at school and never got in trouble. And so my parents basically never paid attention to them versus me. I was always getting in trouble. I was not great in school and I was pretty rebellious in nature right? So my parents paid me a lot of attention. And this was good and bad. I think it's one of the contributing factors to my borderline because they constantly paid attention to me. And I was always feeling abandoned, right? Being a queer kid, being interested in reading books that were about gay people, being a little bit anti-God from, you know, a relatively teen age into my adult teen age where that was considered young but old at the same time. Like I was the first child in my family to stop going to church. And that's a pretty big deal. At least the children who lived at home, like I was at home, supposed to be representing my seven younger siblings. And I stopped going to church was big deal, just super big deal in this household. Okay. And then because, again, I was getting a lot of the attention, the siblings that really needed some comfort, help as well were neglected. So in some ways, they were treating us as individuals, acknowledging that one child needed less attention from their perception and one needed more. And then in another way, they weren't treating us as individuals because they had the expectation that the child who was getting to less or no trouble needed less attention and the child who was getting into more trouble needed more attention. Now, funny enough, and I think this coincides with a thought I've been mulling over, is what kind of attention from our parents causes us to actually feel more suffocated instead of free, which doesn't allow us to pick our individuality and really know who we are. And on the other front, because there's so much from the outside world telling us who to be, it might force some of us to figure that out, thus creating expectations of how other people will treat us and then how we'll treat ourselves. I think one of the reasons why I have such an expectation of my partner to be like sex positive, to be sort of anti-religious or at least very not ever going to be religious is because I worked my whole life trying to figure and have a good relationship out with those things for myself. I tried to figure out, am I sex positive? Do I want to be sex positive? Am I anti-religion or am I just very like anti-being religious? And I think for myself, I'm very anti-being religious. I don't want to live in that particular bubble. And so finding a partner that also had that belief system was very, very important. I have an expectation as does he, that we will never be religious. My mom often wishes that we would come back to the Catholic Church, and I have to constantly remind her that having this expectation is going to create constant disappointment in you. My dad, for some reason, handles everything much better than my mother. Maybe it's a gender thing. But my dad will say, yes, we want you to come back to the religion. We really, really do. We pray for you every day. But he doesn't have the expectation that I'll do it soon, though he does have the expectation I'll do it eventually, which causes disappointment in him as well, just not as frequently as my mother. So the irony, of course, is again, they created an expectation in their head of a version of me that used to be religious but isn't now, and they're hoping I'll go back to that version of me. Sometimes they'll say to me, oh, Betty, you were so much smarter when you were 10, when you were really in the church, 10, 10 years old. What is this expectation they've created in their brain where a 10-year-old would be more self-aware than a 34-year-old, right? It's the version of me that they most idealized in a way, the version of Britney, because I've always been like very aggressive with my beliefs. I've always been very like, you know, (laughs) uh, I don't know, dominant, I guess, in the way that I've expressed them. So even when I was religious, I was ready to convert. I was ready to love through Christ. I was ready to do those things. I loved the Bible. I loved the Catholic Church. So the version of me in their head has set expectations, but I wish they would update that expectation so they wouldn't be so disappointed. So at the end of this question from Discord, it was, can you have the expectation and the reality? I think you can in the right circumstance. First, with yourself. Have a standard and expectation for yourself and have it come true by living out that specific expectation to its fullest, right? 
I have an expectation of myself that I will work hard and hopefully more efficiently over time. And then I have to prove that to myself. I have to prove to myself that I'm allowed to have that expectation. Now, one of the things that has shifted so significantly in my life, and I just vlogged about this the other day, is being a mother. I used to have the expectation that I would be a mother. And now I've had to shift that reality into no longer having that expectation because I can't have that expectation and have it coincide with reality. I cannot, after my diagnosis of fibromyalgia, tell myself you will be a mother still because the truth is, is that it looks like I might not be. And that's a huge deal for me. And it was quite scary for the people in my life to hear that. Like, oh, wait a second. We have the expectation that you'll eventually have a baby with your partner. And I'm like, oop, you have to shift your reality on that as well because my realities had to shift. So it's okay to shift and adapt and to change expectations. But I think you can have it. You can have your cake and eat it too. You can have your expectation and have it reflect reality, but you have to be able to adapt. Being able to adapt is being able to say, I accept reality. My parents not accepting reality because they cannot adapt to their children changing does cause a lot of disappointment and honestly, a lot of anguish in their lives. I wish I could take my parents' pain away from them, but it's not my responsibility to, to take away that anguish from people in their 60s who will not learn the lesson of adapting. And then the question that gets posed to me as a child or to you as the audience member is, do we want to be those people? My parents are really good people, but I get to look at them and say, yeah, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be the kind of person that holds on to an expectation that does not connect to reality. I do not want to be in anguish because I, me, the consciousness that is Brittany, the person that thinks she's smart, can't adapt, can't update can't have a healthier, better relationship with what's actually happening in life. That is what is so scary about having a misalignment with your reality and your expectations is that you could cause yourself to suffer unnecessarily when you don't have to. Life is suffering in and of itself. I think one of the greatest tools to carry on through life is the ability to suffer less because life will always cause you to suffer by default. Life by default is suffering. So adding on these new blocks of suffering is just being a little bit of a suffer whore. Forgive me. But I think being raised Catholic, I see this, oh, I love to suffer. Oh, look at me suffering. I'm going to suffer more. I think my parents sometimes suffer because it kind of turns them on. Not literally, but I mean kind of, right? Sometimes we'll have conversations about women who die in childbirth for their children or women who see an ectopic pregnancy all the way to the point where she dies and oh, how beautiful her suffering was for her child. Something about the religious bubbles, they have a little bit of a hard on for suffering. Now I understand that as I think suffering is the key to enlightenment and wisdom, but it's, it's reasonable suffering that I think is the key. I think unnecessary suffering is not the key. Now it is a um, sort of core plot to your life. I think it's sort of like a, a rite of passage in life that you'll have to uh, suffer unnecessarily. You'll have to learn how to suffer efficiently. And so expectations is absolutely a part of that. Why did you set the expectation in the first place? Like I remember I had the expectation of my former partners that they wouldn't cheat, right? I don't cheat. I expect you not to cheat. I think it's within our values to not cheat. And my partners used to brag in the past, oh, I would never cheat. Why would I ever cheat? I would always love you. Why would I ever do that? And then one of them cheated. And I was like, oh, how interesting. Now, to be honest with you, if I genuinely was introspective, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. if I genuinely was introspective at the time, extrospective, I would have actually reasonably had the expectation that he would have cheated. Because if I looked at his pattern of behavior over the years to come, I could have actually reasonably expected him to cheat. But because I was blinded, because I had cognitive dissonance, because I refused to see him in the most real reality, I just held on to the dreams he sold me. I was shocked when I found out he cheated. And now looking back, I'm like, oh my God, of course he cheated. What am I thinking? It didn't matter what he was saying. Why didn't I look at his actions? Versus now, the partner I'm with, I did look at his actions and what he was saying. So he's saying he won't cheat on me. He's saying he's anti-cheating. He's saying it absolutely disgusts him in the way that it disgusts me. And then I had to look at his actions. I have to continue to look at his actions. And his actions are perfect. Just 
perfect, just wonderful, because they coincide with what he's saying, truly, as our mind. We're very respectful of boundaries. We're very open to negotiating. The communication is perfect, just wonderful, just great. But again, as we continue to live with one another, as we continue to build trust with one another, because we're newly into this relationship, you know what I mean? We have to move and adapt expectations as necessary. When we got into this relationship, um, we talked about walking every day for my fibro. It is an expectation we have, but it's also a loosey-goosey one because we don't always have the spoons to do it. So the irony is I should walk every day for my fibro, but we don't always have the mental capacity, me personally, to do it. So like today is my podcast day, my film day, my edit day, and it's already 6 p.m. And I'm like, okay, Brittany, we have to do 5,000 steps today. And I'm sitting here thinking, when am I going to get those in? I have the expectation, as I should, that I'm going to do my steps. I've been doing them really well the last like so long. I've been really on top of it, right? I've been really proud of the amount of steps I've been doing. I've even gone over and beyond sometimes. So I feel pretty good about that. But today, should I have the expectation that I'm going to accomplish my goal of doing my steps? I don't know. I think that might be setting myself up for failure. Now, it's not a black and white rule, me doing my steps. It's necessary, but I can replace my steps with other forms of working out. So I've been lifting weights and I'm like, okay, maybe I can replace my steps with the weights. It's not exactly the same. It's definitely not going to benefit me the same way, but it's better than nothing. So I need to change my expectation because of the way the day has gone. Now, I might still shift. I might still be open to after this podcast is done and editing is done to walking at nighttime, like 10 p.m. But I don't know if that's realistic considering that we don't usually walk that late and that's pretty late to be out and about in the streets on a Tuesday night, right? That's pretty abnormal. So again, I don't want to set myself up for failure. So I don't want to overpromise to myself that I'm going to reach this expectation. Instead, I'm going to adapt today and recognize that I woke up later than I planned. It's very hot out. All of Europe's under like this warning for weather right now. We've been feeling it the last few days we've walked. I felt so sick yesterday after my live show. I was I was like very nauseous in bed. And a part of it was dehydration, low blood sugar, a whole thing. And I realized like, oh, I might be doing too much. So I have to adapt to the expectation of what I can provide myself today. And I still won't consider myself a failure, but I will consider myself a failure in regards to getting my gold star of doing it all today. And so I won't give myself the gold star because I won't do my steps maybe, but I'll tell myself, look, in terms of expectation and reality, we got to meet the two. Okay. So I'm not going to be disappointed in myself. I'm just going to be like, oh, it is what it is today. Moving on. Right. So obviously it's very healthy to make sure your reality and exception, expectations, sorry, oh my gosh, match together. Now, I think it leads to happiness and joy, obviously, but where does the kindness come into play? And I think the kindness comes into play when we accept that we're not always perfect and we accept that people around us aren't. I think sometimes we end up being cruel with our expectations. We're cruel to ourselves and we're cruel to the people around us. Sometimes we do it just so naively. We don't even know why we are doing it. Why are we pressuring the people in our lives to be this perfect thing that they were never going to be in the first place? Where do those expectations come from? Sometimes I think they come from the bubbles, your cultural bubble, where you're raised bubble, your background, your environment, right? Shame usually comes from our environment. And guilt usually comes from us betraying our values. So of course, if you have this expectation from the bubble, your cultural like atmosphere that you should be this kind of a man, this kind of a woman, this kind of a this, 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 and you fail, you don't reach those goals, of course you're going to feel like you haven't reached those expectations and you're going to be unkind to yourself. Of course, you're going to be cruel to yourself. And at the same time, why did society, oh my gosh, I'm sweating right now. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. I'm like literally dying. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, at the same time, why did society give you that expectation in the first place? Is society itself suffering from expectation paralysis, right? Is society itself riddled with shame and then projecting it and continuing to push it on everybody else? Obviously, the answer is yes. We do this in every facet of our lives, from the way we look, from what we eat to where we live. There is always a judgment waiting to be had. I think ultimately, when we set an expectation in relation to our values, that's probably the most efficient way to seek out joy. And that should be our goal, right? I'm going to push you in the direction of joy first and foremost. And joy, I think, always is healthy. It always makes you happy and it's always kind. But joy doesn't come out of just picking the right decision. It comes out of understanding why we did it in the first place. So 
if we think about when we make decisions and we're setting ourselves up for failure, we might feel like a disappointment. But we can be disappointed and still have joy, right? I'm kind of disappointed today if I don't do my steps, but I'm still going to be joyful because I'm also radically accepting where I am in the day, where my spoons are, where my capabilities are, the time of day, where the sun is. I'm giving myself an understanding which is rooted in kindness. I'm telling myself, hey girl, I know you had an expectation today. I know you wanted to do this, but you can't and it's no big deal, and tomorrow we'll get back on it, right? You're not failing all of the work you've been doing just because today we didn't do our steps. Look, we'll do squats. We'll do push-ups. We'll do something else. No big deal. We'll eat better today. We'll make sure we go to sleep on time today. We'll do something in replace of that expectation. The expectation that has to trump all expectations is kindness to me. Making sure we're being kind, not nice. See, if I was being nice with myself, I think I would fake the relationship uh, or that convert that like relationship with myself, I would say, uh, let me see, if I was being nice to myself, I'd say like, girl, you don't even have to worry about that. Who even needs to walk? It's like you're being like fake kind. It's like you're being kind of you're lying to yourself a little bit. You never even had to have that expectation. It's like, no, I have that expectation and I'm not going to meet it today. But instead of like beating myself up, which which wouldn't be kind, I'm going to be kind and say, look at what we can do to replace this thing that we can't quite do today. Versus if I was being a, like if I was lying to myself, I'd say, don't even work out. Fuck it. No steps, no weights, no push-ups. We don't even need to do it. Who even needs to do it? And that in turn is not fitting reality with expectation, but also you're failing yourself. You're under-promising. You are going back to being cynical and pessimistic and why do I even need to try? Expectation should be a healthy tool we use in our life to match our reality and to become better than we were yesterday. But expectations like everything else can be healthy and unhealthy. So for me personally, I set expectations in conjunction with my standards and values, in conjunction with what I want and I try very hard not to overpromise. So e- example, um, I told my partner like, okay, I'm going to go film the podcast. And so now he has an expectation that I will film this podcast and that I will make an effort to do my job because that's what I've promised to do in this relationship is to make sure to do my job. And then I will meet that expectation by getting the podcast done. Yay for me. I'm already there. And then I will edit the podcast tonight, Right. So we can have tomorrow to do other things, right? Because we has an expectation that tomorrow we will exercise by going swimming in the ocean. I have the expectation that tomorrow we are going to go swimming in the ocean to meet my requirements for my physical exercise. Tomorrow we have an expectation of how the day will go based off of the, the actions I've done today. So to match reality tomorrow, to fit that expectation in reality, I have to fulfill my promise today. I didn't overpromise. I got my podcast done. I'm doing it now. I'm not going to overpromise by not editing. So I'm going to definitely edit even if it takes all night. And that gives us all day tomorrow to get a good amount of exercise in around this scorching sun. I can't, I can't even explain to you how hot it is right now. It is so hot and I'm like, it's not, I'm dying. Okay. But Instead of walking in the heat and risking heat stroke, we're going to go at the appropriate time to the ocean to get our exercise in. And we plus we have to walk there. So I'm going to get some steps in anyways. We build a reality around our expectations. So you can't overpromise and you have to move within reality. Of course you can have expectations in reality. But what happens when you have expectations of someone and they cannot fulfill them? What happens when you are disappointed time and time again? Again, go back to kindness. Aren't you being kind of unkind to yourself if you give the expectation to, let's say you have a sibling who is just kind of a constant failure and they, uh, I'm trying to give an example, let's say um, let's say they never can hold down a job for no good reason. They just, they always make excuses. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to get a job. Oh man, you know, I've really been applying. I've been, you know, it's a struggle, but I'm really working on it. But then you find out they're not actually working on it. They're just like hooked up on Xbox and they never get out of the house and they never apply to a job. Is having the expectation that they're going to become like a CEO tomorrow reasonable? No, that doesn't match reality. Is having the expectation that they're never going to get a job fair? Probably not because you never know. But is having the expectation that they're going to be exactly who they are the right way to match reality? Yeah. 
The right way to match reality, in my opinion, to expectation is accepting, radically accepting, where people are. I fully accept that people are on their own journeys and that I can do my best to have boundaries with how I interact with them or how I do things. But overall, it is not my journey to hook my happiness and expectation to their lifestyle. So if I have a sibling, let's say, who never got off their butt, never made an effort, never did, they would be the sibling that I, who I then expected to be in this moment of time for maybe a long time. So I believe we're all like living moments of time, right? I'm in a moment of time where I'm learning to have a relationship with my fibro and one day I'm gonna be so good at it that you guys won't ever hear me say like, you know, I'm still struggling with my fibro. One day that'll just be like a thing, but I'm in this moment. Maybe you have a sibling who's in a moment where they're never gonna get a job, allegedly, never, but don't say never because like, hello, never is kind of pretty black and white. They're in a moment and this moment might last a lifetime, so technically never, <laughs> but it could just last the next five years. So for this moment in time, I radically accept and have an expectation around this person's activity and action. For this moment in time, for as long as it lasts, I will treat my sibling like a person who will overpromise getting work and getting off the couch. And I will then uh, sort of react accordingly and have a proper expectation of that sibling, right? Instead of thinking, um, how could they be this way? Why are they, why am I, dis like, instead of being disappointed, I think it starts with us. To have the expectation that is within reason for what we're observing and experiencing. Stop having expectations that are unrealistic like my parents who still think for some reason my partner and I are going to become Catholic one day and join the church. It brings them so much anguish, so much disappointment. Stop being the person who has an expectation of a person's character that they've never shown you before. For the sake of being kind to yourself, radically accept others. And then ask yourself, how much distance do I need with that person if I'm going to radically accept that they'll never get better, right? The relationship always starts with yourself, reflects with other people, ends with yourself. So yes, I have an expectation of X, Y, Z, but the expectation has to begin and start stop with myself. I cannot expect other people to be anyone but who they are. And then I have to make peace with it which is a struggle. It's so hard. But it is about matching expectation to reality. You can have that. In the same way that I look at my parents and I expect them to never expe expect, I expect, I have an expectation of my parents that they will never stop begging me to be Catholic. And the moment I start thinking, maybe my parents will change one day, I have failed and overpromised to myself that my parents will learn the lesson and radically accept that they're their children for who they are. I have to radically accept that my parents will never radically accept their par their kids for who they are. Never being the key word of never asterisk unless for some reason there's like a total turnaround and oh my God, blah, 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 blah. But again, since my parents have chosen to be Catholic and live that out for the rest of their lives, technically never is accurate, but never is never is never. Technically, who knows? Maybe something radically insane would happen and my parents would have like a change of heart and realize like, oh, my kids are just never going to be Catholic. And that would be a day I would live for. But again, I don't want to overpromise myself and hold on to that hope because I think it's sort of unfair to myself and not very kind. In the same way that my parents are being unkind to themselves by holding on to the hope that their children will be Catholic. It's just cycles, right? We're all just like battling ourselves and battling our fears and battling expectations of other people. I expect humans to be who they are. Humans are going to human was created out of my, my past self that was over promising humanity's actions to myself. I was over promising that humans were going to reach this height of enlightenment or wisdom or patience or kindness in a mass. And so I was disappointed constantly by people for not reaching it fast enough. But then I realized that that was being so unkind to myself. By setting that expectation and never having the reality meet it, I was driving myself crazy. I drive myself crazy thinking people will one day stop murdering and stop raping and stop lying and stop cheating. It's driving me or used to drive me crazy thinking that if I just said the right thing, if I just made the right video, if I just put out the right tweet, people en masse would stop hurting each other. And it was driving me crazy. And my therapist really taught me like, girl, you were never going to be Superman. I was like, are you sure? Are you sure? 
She was like, yeah, it's not going to happen. I was like, okay. And once I radically accepted that I was not going to save the world, I realized like, oh, it was never my job to begin with. It was only my job to ever radically accept humanity for what it was. Humans are going to human. I am open, but I have boundaries. You do you. I'm going to do me. You're going to do you. And I'm going to still hope for the best. Hope that humanity could be wonderful. Hope that all parents would love their children. Hope that all doctors would care for their patients. Hope that all teachers would care for their students. Hope that all governments would care for their people. But I'm also going to, while hoping, like Katara, have a sense of realism mixed in there. I'm going to bring some tough energy and my Katara energy. I'm going to mix them together. I'm going to maintain the hope while still accepting the reality. And then I'm just going to live my life and seek out my joy, as I think you should too. So remember, okay, you want to be healthy, you want to be happy, and you want to be kind. And expectation must meet reality. Reality must meet expectation. And it is more than possible to do so. If you guys have follow-up questions on the subject, please let me know in the comment sections down below. Thank you to the Discord member who left me that suggestion. I would love to hear your feedback, of course, because I'm happy to make a part two. And with that said, I hope to see you over on the Discord. Thank you so much for supporting my content, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye! I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool